I told you so, I told you so, I told you so. I was the first one to say it, at least that I heard, Atmospheric River. Uh, made a video specifically talking about it over 24 hours ago, but also made uh, uh, comments to that effect last weekend saying we didn't have any rain really coming this week, but we needed to hold out through the weekend. We would see uh, continued reduction in the fire danger in British Columbia once these atmospheric rivers are allowed to come in. And that's what they're saying now. Carry me with her, dude. That's why you watch me, because I just say whatever I think. I don't have any uh, producer over top of me. I don't have any managers saying, well, you can't say that yet. Or, you know, I don't have to make any consensus with a bunch of people, which is a weakness. But it's also a strength here that I can just speak freely. That's why you watch me. Hit like, share, subscribe. Let's talk about the atmospheric river this weekend. There it is. This is bad news. My God. Falling out right now. Anything could happen. Get on. Wow. I'll watch the video later. <laughs> I also want to specifically speak to a question that I had given to me uh, directly this morning from somebody who is uh, burying their husband this weekend. They have a memorial uh, celebration of life or something to that effect, and they were asking what the weather's going to be like. So we will talk about Prince George a little bit just to help you out because I have my sympathies for you, uh, my condolences to you. Well, let's start with the basics, the integrated water vapor transport. What are we looking at? Look at all this across the Pacific. We know we got a big low here, and it's dragging all the way from Japan. Japan, let's watch how she moves towards the BC coast. There she comes. Boof. Starting, starting. Oof. There we go. There you go. Valid. Rainfall on the coast. Here comes that main pulse. Look at those big reds in there. As we go to 42 hours out, 48, ooh, and now she's spilling into the BC interior even a little bit, breaking over the mountains, some rainfall coming to parts of the BC interior. Exactly which hours Prince George can expect this? Well, I'll do my best here to, to give you an answer for that. But as you can see, that is a classic atmospheric river. I don't know what category we're talking about here. Uh, some are saying at least 100 millimeters on the coast. We'll try to get an answer on that too. Some places I suspect much, much more, especially higher terrain. As you can see, it's a pattern because look right, right behind it is another plume of garbage making its way towards us. We get a couple days off in between events and then we're right back into it. More or less, there you go. You can see it shoveling right towards us. So we don't have just one event here. We're probably looking at a secondary event in the days after. And while we're here, we'll just look at the uh, integrated water vapor, right? How much vapor is there to make rainfall? Water vapor, you can see that plume really pushing towards the BC coast. And now you'll notice that there's a lot of red down here, and that's because it's very hot down there by the intertropical convergence zone. It's very hot. It's very thunderstormy there all the time. Clouds are very tall. And we know that warm air holds more moisture than cold air, right? So there's a lot of moisture in the air. That doesn't mean that uh, it's more likely to rain heavy there or not in any given day, just because there's more. But here in northern latitudes, uh, you know, we tend to have uh, drier uh, air. We, we, we just don't have the air temperature most of the time to sustain that kind of humidity in the air, that kind of pure volume of water vapor we're talking water vapor we're talking like you know these micron things that are microns big it takes a million of them or more to make a raindrop you know to come together coalesce and make a raindrop so as you can see there goes the first event and then we got the secondary event coming uh, after that boom we're overcoming you know so i would call this a pattern we are breaking into a fall pattern here in bc of course uh these lows will draw warm air up from the south so that will keep temperature still you know, seasonal or better, I think, in through the weekend. Here we're looking at rainfall over a 12-hour period. That's starting today up in the Alaska Panhandle. Raining very, very hard there tonight. And we'll see it move on down. Haida Gwaii taking a licking again. They've already hit some heavy rainfall already. Look at these values on the coast there. Heavy values, heavy values on the coast. Uh, this And it's in millimeters, just so you're aware. So that's talking 35 millimeters, for example, in 12-hour period, right? So 12 hours, you can see 35 mils there. That's a lot of rain. It's a lot of rain. Some of that spilling over. I am concerned that uh, your event in Prince George is going to have the threat of some rain, although you may have some hours in which uh, you're in the clear. So we'll try to get you that window here in a few minutes, looking at the possible window. And then we have the next event coming 
straight in after. Well, what can we expect for accumulation? You know, total accumulation. Uh, some are saying 100 millimeters they're reporting in the news. Is that the case? Is that accurate? Well, let's have a look. If we were to go with ECMWF modeling between now and Monday morning, so I'd say through the weekend, you know, that's kind of my, my uh, forecast period here we're talking about. 151 mils in some places uh, along the north coast, sure. Uh, west coast of Haida Gwaii, 140 mils, maybe. Yeah, okay. What about uh, inland, 30, 30, 30 in the coast mountains as you get further in? Less so, you know. So when we're talking about your rainfall uh, possibilities for Prince George, the you know the day of your uh, event, the day of your uh, husband's memorial. Uh, keep in mind, we're talking about 10 millimeters possible through the entire weekend on this modeling, on ECMWF modeling. Uh, see if GFS has a big time disagreement. Uh, I think it'll look kind of the same. They look kind of the same, but you know, the GFS has Prince George taking less, right? So very much similar n numbers. Looks like parts of BC are going to take probably considerably more. Icon seems to think that uh, if you're anywhere near Terrace, you may even be talking 200 mils and plus. Uh, that is entirely possible. You know, this would be the overproducing model. Like, you know, the other ones may be a little bit more conservative, but even then, as you look at Vancouver Island, 70 mils, Hey, good soaking, but this isn't nothing. Uh, this is nothing down South that you aren't accustomed to. You know, I really think this is a North coast event and, uh, even these values, uh, wind and whatnot, I'm sure is nothing that you're not accustomed to as well. But yeah, look, there's going to be some heavy winds. Uh, expect some carry, uh, ferry cancellations possibly if there's ferries running on Friday. Look at that, 80 km an hour gusts this weekend. And then we're going to see some winds pick, uh, pick up into the BC interior uh, from the effect of this. So that is uh, one thing we're just hoping that uh, areas where there's fires burning. Um, I know yesterday when the winds picked up, things looked pretty ugly in the caribou for a while. It got very dark, almost dark enough to have the lights come on. Uh, it got very dark and then it started to rain a little bit. I would have been interested to find out uh, if someone had a pH meter and could test that rainfall, how acidic it really was, how much of it was. Uh, it sure had this brown, golden, uh, brown sort of bronzy hint tinge to it so if we look at five in the morning on friday morning you can see already we got a fair bit of rain that's up in that north coast already haida Gwaii taking it pretty good our first round passing just north of prince george looks like williston area will see some showers though not heavy rain like on the coast of heavy rain and looks like strong wind as well we got some strong wind values up and down the coast uh, as this low is moving in that is helping bump Temperatures up still in southern British Columbia, 27s, 25s. We are still having record-breaking temperatures going on. Heavy rain for Haida Gwaii. High, heavy rain, especially that west coast. Heavy rain there north of Surf Inlet. Big-time values coming on down into Friday night. Still waiting, still looking pretty dry in the interior. And again, because uh, the warm air is being brought up, we are sitting there looking at, you know, midnight seeing 15 degrees in Kelowna, something like that, or better right? So that's bringing some very, very lovely temperatures. Now we're coming into Saturday. As you can see, early in the morning, there's this first band of potential showers that'll be hitting the Prince George region. That should move its way out sometime in the early morning and catch a break. That's at least the thinking right now and the modeling. Look at the heavy rain up the coast. Look at the surf inlet now getting pounded northern tip of vancouver island getting pounded there's that break through the afternoon we're hoping to see for prince george a little bit of snowfall going to be possible in the mountains uh maybe a little bit of lightning in northern british columbia but we're not looking at a thunderstorm event necessarily uh, and that rainfall will probably pick back up into the evening on saturday so you might have a couple hours of gap it looks like to me in prince george of course this is just one modeling so let's go back to uh, uh 1500 hours there say it's you know, we're in this 50% uh, period of showers for Prince George. Looks like stronger percent chance in the morning, maybe backing off for a little bit in the afternoon uh, and improving. But that's just one model. If we look at the GFS model, it has Prince George really in the clear at this time and most of the rainfall up the coast, uh, looking still very similar to the ECMWF model. My caution to you on that is that GFS is... Um, remarkably unreliable right now. Icon seems to agree more with, uh, that's looking at four o'clock now, but seems to agree more with what we were seeing on ECMWF. 
It has a higher chance of thunderstorms in northern British Columbia. That would be embedded within. So, you know, it's it's not uh, your typical thunderstorm setup. I'm not expecting much for severity in there. More like uh, rain bombs that could produce a little bit of lightning as they do. Uh, that's just one more model. Uh, unfortunately, HRDPS only goes uh, till Friday afternoon at this point. Or no, until Saturday morning. So I can't give you a really good read yet until maybe tomorrow. But again, it looks very similar to the other models so far. Oh, and I had my face in the way of all that. I'm really sorry. I've just removed my face from the picture. Sometimes I do that when I'm trying to make a quickie. Uh, we'll talk about all this, the earthquake today in Kamchatka and more on the Comedy Meteorology Report podcast here on my channel, Joey Only Care Be Weather Dude YouTube. At 6.30 p.m. tonight, Frankie McDonald shows up at 7. That's when we start recording the radio broadcast, 7 p.m. So you get to be with us when we make a radio show. So it's our way of uh, doing our non-live radio show still live. Uh, for everybody uh, out there uh, who uh, enjoys our show. I would love to see the podcast get more attention. But uh, hey, healthy rain through BC this weekend. The interior going to take a little bit of rain, a little bit of rain. Not game-changing rain for the interior, no, but uh, excellent and healthy rain up the coast, absolutely. And then again, do we have secondary events in our near future? Yeah, it sure looks like it, even Monday, uh, heavy rain along the coast again. But we'll have more on that once we get through this first event, I think. So that's just the short update on what we're looking at this weekend. Please hit like, share, subscribe, become a channel member, leave a donation there if you want to uh, buy me a coffee or join the Patreon and and put uh, even $1 a month down to keep supporting the channel. Uh, everybody collectively putting a couple bucks in a month is what has been keeping me fed this entire year, and I'm hoping to see this continue to grow. So this is all I do, is just be ready to talk weather when weather things are going on. Okay, talk to you soon. Bye now.